Christians believe more about God than simply that God is a Father who can relate to us. We believe in a God who does certain things as well. And so the Creed goes on by talking about believing not simply in God the Father Almighty, but a God who is the creator of heaven and earth. Not just the world as we see it, but the world of space, the world that's too small for us to see, the world that's too big for us to see, the invisible spirit world, the world of our emotions, which are not susceptible to eyesight, all this he created. And here we find a very important statement, not simply about who God is and what God does, but who we are. It's reminding us that we are dealing with a God who brings everything into existence, including us. That's an amazing claim and one which has very distinct impact on the way in which we live. We are responsible to God for the creation. We are not the owners of the creation, rather we are its stewards and we must give good care of this creation because it is God's and not ours. It's his unique gift to us, wonderfully resourced and it's not for us to, to damage it or destroy it by the way in which we live. He is Lord of this creation. By implication we have a rejection of pantheism. God made the world. God maintains the world in existence. Without God the world could not exist. But God is also above and beyond the world. So there is no separation but there is here a distinction between God and the world. He made everything that there is uh, and that he made it out of nothing that he wasn't constrained by having to um, work with some recalcitrant materials, but he just made it uh, as he willed. And um, out of nothing, he's the sole creator and it's all his. This has all sorts of practical implications. Um, one implication is that if, uh, as today many believe, um, atheistic evolutionists, um, the world we live in is purely a sort of random product of, of something which has no meaning at all, then there is no meaning in life, and strictly speaking, there's also no meaning in our thought processes. They also are just random um, product. Now, of course, Christian theology makes a very important point, that humanity alone is made in the image and likeness of God. And therefore, there is something about humanity which sets it above every other aspect of creation. He has made us to be uh, maybe lower than the angels, but... Uh, higher than animals and people with the capacity to relate to him and have creative significance like him and moral wills that animals do not have. And so it puts us on altogether a different plane. So humanity is part of creation, not divine, part of creation, but at the same time is raised up over and against the rest of creation. Humanity has a special place in that creation. When scripture says he made us in his image. It's in the context of saying male and female he made uh, m men in his own image. And there is a sense in which that implies that we were made for relationships, not as cold machines, but as people to enter into intimacy and depth of relationships. Be made in God's image somehow means to have the, the capacity or the ability to relate to God. There is something about us, we are made in such a way that we are able to relate to God. There's some kind of similarity, not an identity, but a similarity between ourselves and God. He made us in his own image. He made us to resonate and to relate with himself. So we are incomplete without relating to him. So in the Apostles' Creed, we very clearly are saying, everything is created by God. Any form of dualism is being rejected. We are not to imagine that God created some things and another power, the evil one, created other things. Everything is created by God. Sin exists and evil exists, but these were not created by God. God created a universe that was good. It is we human beings who have misused our free will, who have in this way brought evil into the world. There is a multiple explanation, I think, as to where evil 
comes from and we can't easily track it down to one particular thing. One day we may know more about the origin of evil. The important thing is today not to track down its origin but to recognise its existence and even more importantly to know that whatever, wherever it came from God has given an answer and a solution for it to be dealt with. If my house catches fire it may be helpful eventually to know what caused the fire but the most important thing is to put the fire out first and God cannot be faulted on giving us the means of putting the fire out.